Hello, and welcome to Rotters on the Road. We are Mark and Tony, and this is Derry. Join us as we tour the UK in our pre-loved motorhome, Kate. After leaving Doug, Chrissy, and Sage on their narrow boat, we decided to head off to Cheddar. We stayed one night in the Caravan and Motorhome Club site and two nights at Cheddar Bridge next door. We didn't film anything of the site as it was really busy, but we will when we go back. We enjoyed it so much that we're going to plan a longer trip next year. My first time here since I was about five, I think. Absolutely gorgeous. Start off the gorge. Yeah. Just walk through Cheddar, through all the little towns and shops and things. The gorge is made of limestone and was formed by meltwater floods during the cold periglacial periods, which have occurred over the last 1.2 million years. It has been named as the second greatest wonder in Britain and attracts around 500,000 visitors a year. So, on our way to the caves. This is where we walked up yesterday. The weather was a little bit different. It absolutely pelted down last night and this morning till about half past ten. So I'm gonna brave the caves today. Just coming up oh. to Oh dear, there was a road a head closed sign back there, but we're not sure what it relates to. Right. Yeah. We're not sure what it relates to, whether we can actually get up through the gorge or not. Sometimes they put them there if it's like a turn off that's closed, isn't it? So Road we'll see. Closed. Road ahead closed. Really? Oh, come on. It turned out that it was temporarily closed due to a bike race. So we went off and got some diesel and something to drink. And by the time we drove back round, the road was back open again. Inside Goff's Cave. I am freaking out a little bit. Um, I don't like things like this. Uh, but I'll be okay, I'm sure. worth coming in just for that, isn't it? Yeah. It's stunning. <laughs> it's just incredible. It's my own like case. Yeah. Uh, wow.
two main caves open to the public are on the south side of the gorge, owned by the Longleat Estate. The extensive Goffs Cave and the smaller Cox's Cave are both named after the people who discovered them. Goffs Cave, which was discovered in 1903, leads around 400 metres into the rock face and is where Cheddar Man was discovered in the same year. He is the oldest complete human skeleton found in Britain. He is estimated to be around 9,000 years old. Cox's Cave, discovered in 1837, is much smaller. The gorge's many caves are home to colonies of greater and lesser horseshoe bats. stunning in here. Try not to think about all the rock above my head um, and we'll see you when I actually get out. I get to go and do the other little one as well. So there's like a little wishing well thing here and um, the water from the rock above just drips slowly into it so we're gonna make a wish. Okay Mark's gonna make a wish. Come on then. I'm gonna do one too. There we go. Well, I did it. <laughs> I wouldn't say my fear of caves has been conquered, but once you're in there and you realise you can't have a quick escape, it's like hey ho, I'm here now. So we'll go to Cox's cave and see how I feel there. Just gonna get some coffee. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a close-up of these, but we're sitting having a sandwich and right at the top of this hill there's a rock climber there. But there's also a herd of goats right at the top. I'm going to, no, that's as close as I can go with my phone. I don't know if you can see them. It's like a... They're moving about now, so... <laughs> Amazing. I love all these little gift shops. I'm gonna have to buy a souvenir. Probably just get a fridge magnet to be fair. I collect them wherever we go. So. <laughs> On our way to Cox's Cave now. Just so quaint, really nice. I just love the whole area, it's so cool. So, just come out of Cox's Cave. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's, um, I didn't like it as much. It's more enclosed, which I didn't like. It's got like bits where you have to duck and narrower bits, and it's more like a, an immersive experience. And yeah, and it's too dark. and. Yeah, so we're out now. I preferred Goff's Cave. Goff's Cave was much better, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we're going to go. Yeah. Up there. Good for your calf muscles.
when we was having a coffee earlier, I said, is that a goat over there? And we looked it up, and I never knew, but there are actually feral goats <laughs> on the gorge, and they were just sort of looking over the edge. So uh, when you come here, look out for the feral goats. Goats. Bit of a blustery day today. About halfway up. You can tell from my breathing. Oh, sorry. I just run halfway up Jacob's ladder, and um, kind of wish I hadn't. The legs are burning. Tony's down there somewhere. There she comes. Soldering on. She jumps, windswept, calves aching. <laughs> Was it good for you too? <laughs> that was alright actually. We've got a lookout tower here, we're gonna go up there as well. Stairs as well. <laughs> I'm all actually. Do you mind Harry before I go down? Actually. <gasps> yeah. yeah Let's good. Go for it. So right, we're up at the top of the lookout tower. And uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of a shame it's not a beautiful, clear day. But then it wouldn't be quite as atmospheric if it was. It's uh, we're upper in the wind and. Shrew just jumping over a couple of bits of grass. And there's the gorge over there. Where the van's parked. So yeah. I was wondering whether Jacob's ladder was gonna be worth it really, but if any of you are wondering where little boy is he's in the van it's not a hot day and he has his bed and blanket in case he gets cold he's also got a full bowl of water he's 14 years old now and was very tired from our walk into town the previous day so that was quite successful we managed to do 20 steps up and 20 steps back down <laughs> I don't know what I was worried about <laughs> so all the way up to the top of the Jacob ladder and up on top of the spy tower, or whatever you call it at the top, had an amazing view, so it's well worth going all the way up there because you get to go up the tower at the top and you've got a panoramic view of Cheddar and all, everything, the gorge and the reservoir in the distance. And, uh, and if I can do it, anyone, anyone can, do. can do it. that there aren't that many places for you to safely turn around in a big van or motorhome as you come out of Cheddar Gorge. So we've had to go quite a bit out of our way just to turn around to go back down to get to the campsite. Um, but that's fine. Uh, my breathing's calmed right down now. It only took about half an hour. That's fine. Um, and yeah, the scenery's lovely. So, and we're not in any hurry. It's not like we've got a pressing appointment to get to. So um, we're just enjoying the scenery. And yeah, we're about to go back down 
through the gorge, there's someone in a hurry. Um, yes. Good morning. Um, we've just woken up and had breakfast. Dog's been walked. Tea and toast. Um, and we're going to head into the next city today. Um, it's been very busy in the night and very rainy. But we're okay. We're British. We can handle it. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and book another night here instead of trying to get one on the way home. Because I have found that on the internet it's, um, it's difficult. I do get why people ask on these like Facebook pages where it's the best place to stay. Because they're either two night and a minute to stay or fully booked or closed for the winter or whatever. So yeah, we're going to try and get another night here um, at Cheddar Bridge. So, because Glastonbury's not too far away so we can drive there and then come back and then head home tomorrow. We headed off into Glastonbury but it was a Sunday and half of the shops were closed. It rained quite heavily so we put Derry in the van and found some yummy lunch. We looked around a few shops and then we headed off to the Chalice Well to sample the spring water. We will definitely be back next year and hopefully the weather will be a bit kinder to us. So we are at Montacute House in Somerset. Thought we'd have a look at, we're National Trust members so I thought we'd have a little look at uh, a couple of National Trusts on the way home. That's what you call a driveway. <laughs> Be nice wouldn't it? Hey, imagine coming down there in a, a carriage up to the front door. It's over 400 years old. It's incredible. So what we're going to do is um, walk the dog around the grounds and then go back and get a ticket to go in the house. Yeah, we're National Trust members, have been for a few years now. Um, now we've got the mates home, I might even join English Heritage as well. Um, yeah, it's been, oh, we've saved a lot of money. We go up to our local um, gardens um, every Sunday, so. And wherever we are around the country, we, we try and visit at least one. Oh, well, now that's what you call a greenhouse. Oh, it's amazing. I grow plants myself, veggies, so this for me is heaven. Huh. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Want. Want. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yep. Yep. Nice. Oh, the house is pretty spectacular actually. Can't wait to have a look inside. Apparently it's just the ground floor. I'll have to find out if that's a permanent thing or whether it's just at the moment sometimes they do work on these houses and it's restricted access so Derry likes it don't you Derry yep acid rain <laughs> so I love this hedge even more now because look there's a little sign here saying ice house a little path and you only literally see the tiny little gap in the in the hedge <laughs> when you come up to it i love it oh it's magical <gasps> oh it's lovely oh wow look at that view wow yeah liking this place more and more I love places with all little nooks and crannies and most of the National Trust places have things like this. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Look at a tiny little gap in the wall. <laughs> Ooh, muddy. Oh my goodness. Oh, it goes brown. Oh, this is the ice house we're going to, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look at this. Do you like an ice house? Sorry, there were some people. I didn't want to be rude and video them. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it on the way out. So, this is the ice house, a bit dark. Ooh, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Yeah, it's wide out. Oh, wow. I don't know how far down it goes because it's oh, dark. Oh, it's 
Oh, I don't know if I can turn the light on in here. Can I turn the light on? No. Okay. What do I do? Yeah, turn your light on. I don't know what that button is there. No. That's what Chrissy was saying about her. Um... Oh, yeah, you can look down there just about. See something? Down there. Something's fallen down there. Yeah, it's not that deep. Hmm. No. Yeah, cool. So where did they live? Who? The mice. Ice house. Oh, ice. <laughs> oh, dad joke. <laughs> the ice house at Montecute. Oh, there. There's a picture of it there. And that's how they used to get things down in there. I have to store ice for use in the dining room and kitchen. It was sighted midway between the kitchen and the ice ponds in the park, right? Where the ice was collected and broken up. The ice was carried to the ice house in wheelbarrows or small carts and packed into the building, then crushed and stamped down to form a solid mass which would remain frozen for up to two years. Good grief. We like learning things, new things. And this another nice little gate thing here. The one that you looked at in that book. Oh. So I'm trying not to get these other people in because it's just rude. Oh, Chinese lions, look at those. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, the colour comes out really cool on video. I like Chinese lions. I did have two, but my stepson broke one of them. <laughs> but they weren't this big, they were tiny little tube things. window seat. <laughs> that meant to be Don Quixote. Oh, these are those lovely tapestry chairs, look, that mm. were in that book. Mm. Oh, they're amazing, aren't they? What a nice room. Mm, tapestries. I like tapestries. It's got all sorts in it. That looks like an emu. This tapestry is almost 600 years old and recently underwent a cleaning and conservation process which took four years to complete. Located in Montacute in Somerset, the house was built in 1598 by Sir Edward Phillips, master of the rolls and the prosecutor during the trial of the gunpowder plotters. It was constructed of the local Ham Hill Stone and has been designated as a Grade 1 listed building. Sir Edward Phillips' descendants occupied the house until the early 20th century. The National Trust acquired the house in 1931. That's it for this week, but of course it would be rude not to pass Stonehenge on the way home from Somerset. We will be visiting this magical place again next year as it's free for National Trust members. See you next time with a better camera and videos in landscape. Yay! Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.